Hey guys, Chat Lab here. It's Cad Lab here. All right, guys, it's Cad Lab here, and I want to let you guys know it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful morning, and I wanted to show you something really quick. I might not be the best explainer at the moment because, you know, as I told you guys in the beginning, we're trying to learn and also explain our learning curve and what do we do to get there. So I have this coin fixture that uh, was giving me a little bit of a headache, but uh, along with tutoring and all that other stuff, we kind of mu we kind of pretty much figured everything out on this end. So for the model work of the coin, I'm going to turn on my bodies here. There goes the coin itself, right? So pretty much what we did was, I'm gonna see if I can scroll it back and play it. So here's what we did. We created a circle. We drew the coin. We started the procedure with the coin. Boom, then we drew a box over the coin. We left it sunken in to a certain depth. That way we can get a good grab on the coin. And also right here, I'll explain in a second what that'll be too as well for that hole. So this hole is to just reference geometry, right? So this is a machine hole. So what we do is reference our geometry, meaning when we put it in the machine, our first op is gonna be pretty much just face it off. Right now, that's all we have on hand is a end mill. We're gonna face it off. Boom, 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 boom. Then we're gonna come back, clear our pockets with an adaptive, full dead of cut. This is aluminum, plus, you know, quarter inch, that's a pretty big tool. Boom, boom, boom. Decking it off. Oh, clear it out. So then after that, we're gonna come in and do a pocket. Yes, yes, yes. Mind you, we left seven thou on the wall to clean up, do a finish pass. So it's, it's cleaning up those pockets, cleaning up those pockets, and now here comes the, the spring pass. Boom. Mm. Cleaning everything up. These are going to be for the Mighty Bites. We drill our hole in the middle. That's our first op. And then here's our second op. We turn it around to the side, and then we face the back off as well. Boom, boom, boom. Not that it's necessary. I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's not necessary. I just like both sides to be machine surfaces. So here's the the fixture when we're drilling holes. We're doing multiple step downs because I'm not a big fan of just plowing in there. Uh you remember that fixture that we were working on? Um I'm I'm cutting it out uh right now as we talk. But the thing is, is I noticed uh when I'm looking at this cutting, it's moving pretty slow. Very slow for aluminum. <laughs> anyway, so I want to stress to you guys that when you're doing operations and you're using these tools, please make sure you have the right speeds and feeds because right now I'm cutting aluminum and that's not cool. You could do, go a lot faster. You could uh, do a lot deeper with those cuts, which cuts down your machine time. I don't know if that makes you guys happy, but that definitely makes me happy. So probably in a couple days, what I'm going to be doing here is getting a uh, tool library together, separating aluminum, titanium, you know, whatever I'm cutting, I'm going to have different sections of what I'm cutting. So one through 10 might be aluminum. Uh, 10 through 20 might be titanium, you know, and so on and so forth for steel or whatever material that I'm mostly cutting because uh, This right here is is, is uh, If I was running a job shop or whatever it is, this is a, a major waste of money That's a cleanup pass and that can be taken a lot faster than that. And if you see here I'm literally going 9.1 uh, 9.1 inches a minute, which is my feed rate. I have it chucked all the way up to 150%, which means that I was cutting very slow, probably titanium or something when I chose this tool. Uh, post processor is a major, major part 
in this whole thing. So just pay attention to your tools, pay attention to your tool speeds and feeds, and you'll be A-OK. -okay. But that's not my main thing on this video. Papa Cad Lab just got a little gift in today from uh, you know someone special. And this is actually a bandsaw. Now, these people here aren't, you know, I'm not sponsored by them whatsoever. I, I just, uh, we got this, this, we got this bandsaw in and we thought it was a fair price. The guy told us, uh, can cut titanium, it'll cut brass like nothing. I even watched a couple videos on, uh, on uh, its performance. This thing cut a round three inch stock bar and I thought that was absolutely amazing. So, while we're running this, we're gonna be putting this together on the shop floor. And uh, for those of you guys that haven't seen my shop, I'm gonna give you a little tour, a little look around, just so you guys could see how I started, how I began, how I came about, even if I do or I don't come about, at least you get to see this video here. So this is my little baby 440. All right, one of the glasses are fogged up because we try to uh, we try to put a solution where the water would uh, just drip off instead of staying you know stuck on there and just leaving a filmy residue. To at one point you can't even see your uh, material being cut anymore. But as you can see, that completely didn't work. So here's my uh, little workstation, laptop area. My wife, uh, you know, here and there she steals my uh, laptop. So I guess it's not there at the moment. Here's one of the slides we've done. This is a Glock 21. Yeah, that came out pretty good. Here's where I keep all my tools, by the way. I just wanna let you guys know, I use uh, Lakeshore Carbide Tools. I use a lot of Lakeshore Carbide Tools. We use, uh, what else do we buy from Lakeshore? This is a 1 8 flat end mill. Here's a, a 1 4 20 degree ball. Super, super small. But I'll tell you what, I had the, the worst luck with these things. But uh, once I figured it out, I, I pretty much got it down to a science. Uh, if you guys want to see a video on that, on how to use these Lakeshore Carbide engravers, just let me know, comment at the bottom, and I'll make a separate video, but include this one in it, so you guys can watch me and uh, how it cuts at certain speeds, and uh, pretty much the feed rate is a big key on this, and, uh, and obviously the speed. You don't want to go too fast, but you definitely don't want to go too slow, neither. So, uh, very, very, very useful, these uh, engravers. I told you we get we get uh we buy most of our tools from Lakeshore Carbide and um, here's here's one tool that I like really 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 inexpensive tools they work with you plus their customer service is on point and I love good customer service because I have a bunch of questions that I always need to ask and I don't want some guy on the other phone on the other line on the phone just telling me, you know, oh yeah, this, or yeah, that, and just not even understanding my problem, or even worse, answering my question. I'm gonna do a whole run of this video of me setting this up. So stay tuned, because I have no idea what I'm doing, and this thing is super heavy. Really? Really? Who's gonna understand this? Like, come on, come on. Give me some dimensions here, it's CAD Lab. Jesus.
And with this, you can split it in half, too. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, baby! Yo, bitch, I turned itself off. I know. That's what it does. When it finishes cutting, that's the limit switch. That's it. Done.